got my notes, got my matcha latte, and I have two portfolios to go through that I applied to get into my art university and program and got accepted. So let's just go through it. Okay, so let's, let's go back. Let's go back five years, five whole years. I was 17 years old, holy fucking cow. I had just graduated from high school and I knew that I wanted to go into an art school in, for post-secondary. I put together a portfolio of my best work, the stuff that I loved the most, and I applied and I got accepted. Fucking yes. And then I did that whole first year, applied to get into my design program for second to fourth year, got accepted. And now here I am. So yeah, I figure a lot of kids are probably in the same situation as I was when I was graduating high school. Um, I had been doing art my entire life. I knew that I wanted to take it into my career and uh, continue learning about it through post-secondary. So I figured why not show it to the audience of, of YouTube and uh, hopefully I can be helpful or at least um, interesting to anybody who's uh, thinking of applying to an art school. So as I was saying, I have two portfolios. So the first one was um, all of my stuff that I had done prior to art college. And then the second one is all the stuff that I accumulated during that first year. So to get into the um, college that I went to, AU Arts, it's a art university in my city, formerly ACAD. Everybody who gets in, they have to do first year studies. And during that first year, you can take any first year course, but there is like a handful of recommended courses that you should take if you want to get into the design program. So the design program is stuff like graphic design, illustration, character design, and advertising. And then you graduate with a Bachelor of Design versus going the fine arts route, which is like textiles, jewelry, painting, drawing, that kind of stuff. So yeah, I went the design stream. I got in first year, studied it, got into the program, did my three years, and then graduated with my bachelor. That all kind of wrapped itself up a year ago and then for the past year I've just been working as a designer and yeah, things are going pretty well. So um, I figured I would put together this portfolio just to kind of reminisce and uh, look into the old art that got me to where I am now. So let's take a look. So I believe most of the pieces that I applied to get into the institution or whatever were completed during my final year of high school. At that point, I was like way too cocky for my own good about like my artistic ability. And I, other than like a couple other people maybe, um, I had never felt like there was a lot of competition for me in high school, which is like, it's shitty for growth, but it's also shitty for my ego. Like I was going into art school thinking like, oh, I'm fucking top dog, you know, whatever, I got this. But it wasn't until I was actually going through the application process that I was thinking like, oh my God, what if I don't get in? What if there's like a bunch of other people who are like the best artists at their schools or their little communities that are applying as well, and they're all better than me. So it was like definitely a fear in my head that kind of like humbled me, um, but thankfully I got in. And yeah, these are just all of the pieces that I submitted to be accepted. So this first one was just a sketchbook piece. Oh my God, the craft was so shitty. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I like, I had no idea how to photograph art or how nice it should be. Like you could see the fucking coils of the sketchbook in the corner. Awful, I'm pretty sure I took this on my Samsung Galaxy S5, yeah. But yeah, this is just like a sketchbook exercise. I'm not entirely sure why I included it. I thought maybe it was like cool or showed like that I can be abstract or something, I don't know. Um, and then the second one is a digital painting that I was really proud of. It was like my first digital painting that I um, did on like a single layer and didn't use lines or anything like that. Yeah, it's, it's really nothing special. You can definitely see the like anime influence in my art at this point. All of this is, is still very much um, influenced by the things that I was a fan of and less for the sake of creating like nice art. 
And then this one was a project in my final year of high school, I believe, in my art class. It was just a regular art class, not like AP or IB or whatever the fuck. But it was, you were supposed to remake a classic painting in multimedia form. I was like super fucking stoked on this. It was a gift from my mom because she loves Gustav Klimt, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a little, it's a little tragic. It was cool to play with multimedia, I guess. I wasn't really like, I, I feel like I kind of used the multimedia aspect of it to kind of lazy out, is that a word? Be lazy about the actual like skill of the, the painting. So yeah, not my best, but good overall, I guess. This one, um, so dumb. Like I can't believe I'm putting this stuff into my portfolio. This was literally just like a doodle that I did during my break when I was working at a Starbucks. On my breaks, I would like pull out a sketchbook and just like doodle a bit. And I, I, I don't know, I, I really like this. I thought it was like so fucking detailed and, and uh, flourishy. And, and um, something about this that I was super proud of was that I didn't do any like under sketch or anything, which is pretty normal for me now. But at the time I was like, wow, I'm like, I'm a fucking uh, protege. <laughs> Make an art without a, without a sketch, that's pretty cool. So yeah, I included that. And then this one, it was pretty large. It was like the size of, of um, one of those big cardboard portfolio things that you uh, get when you're in high school and you put all of your little projects in. It was done completely in Prismacolor markers, I believe. I remember buying those and just thinking like, they were the fucking most expensive and impressive things that I could own. And then I discovered Copic markers, so that died out pretty quick. Anyways, this was like a pretty large piece. I was pretty happy with it. Spent a lot of time with it. Looking at it now, I don't really, I don't really get it. The chick in the front is pretty cool, I guess, but why is there garbage in the background? I'm pretty sure this was heavily influenced by um, CCC City, if anybody remembers that. I don't know if the guy still makes stuff, but I think he made like, um, a comic, but he also made like a bunch of animated uh, music videos on, what was that website called? Newgrounds? And I was obsessed with them. They were like made to Spanish music and it was like the world that he created was so interesting and cool and like the character designs and like all that, I don't know. If you if you know about them, let me know. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure he was pretty big, but I, I like have no, no way of knowing based on my memory, but anyways, okay, whatever, moving on. <laughs> yeah, okay, this one was a, uh, it was a gift to my boyfriend at the time. It was a digital painting and I was really proud of it. It was like, even now looking at it, it's pretty detailed. The color palette was impressive, I think for me at the time, like I, I didn't have a very good understanding of color, but yeah, not much to say here. It was just like, a more detailed piece that I was proud of. This one was a acrylic piece. It was like a final project or something for um, high school. And I entered this into a little contest that my college had for high school students. I was like so proud of this piece and I felt like it was like so realistic looking and it was like the most um, realism based um, artwork that I had made to that point. So yeah, I submitted it and I was expecting to win, honestly, and I got uh, an honorable mention or whatever. And I was like, I was shook. I was like, really? I didn't, I didn't fucking win first place or whatever. And that was like the first of many wake up calls that I had going through my entire art college experience. When you're in high school, you're in such a bubble and you feel like the people around you represent the whole world. But once you're out of high school, you kind of start to realize like, holy shit, I am just like a tiny little speck in a world of talent and crazy amazing stuff. And that's why I feel like it's super easy to, to put yourself down in terms of your art. But like once you get over that little stage and you, and you see other people's art as not something to make yourself feel ashamed, but something to be inspired by and strive towards, that's when you actually start to grow. And it's when you like start to see things in yourself that that you didn't even think about before. So yeah, that was, that was like a big significant little happening for me related to this piece. 
This one I included just because this was my first like paid, um, not, no, that's not true. This was like a business card design, I believe, for my friend. He ran a little vendor shop that he would go to like anime conventions with and like sell merch and like stuffed animals and stuff like that. Anyways, it was like more of a commercial type project, so I thought I would include that just to show versatility or whatever. So this one was also a gift for my then boyfriend. This was probably my favorite piece that I had done prior to getting into art school. I spent so much time on it and so much effort. And like, even now, like when I look at it, it's pretty good. Like it's, it's very like anime stylized and stuff like that, which I, oops, which I don't really um, gear to myself towards anymore. But there was a lot of like heart put into it and I really wanted to make it good for like this gift for my then boyfriend. I think it's still a successful piece even today. Okay, so this one is, it was the cover of my sketchbook. At that time, um, I liked doing up my sketchbook covers and um, I'm pretty sure this was referenced from some picture on, on Pinterest or something. I was like obsessed with Japanese traditional culture and like the 90s and whatever like I still I still am who am I kidding but yeah this was literally just marker and pen but I really liked it so that's why I included it so this next little bit is just a PDF of a few sketchbook pages pretty basic just like sketches fan art whatever I kind of thought of and thought would be cool this one I was really proud of I can't remember what exactly I got the idea from, like I must have seen some sort of image that I referenced and then turned it into that um, piece. Um, this one was a commission for a friend. Uh, if anybody's familiar with League of Legends, I'm sure you recognize some of the characters. That was like a big part of my life in uh, high school. I would play League of Legends with my friends like every fucking day and it was, it was, <laughs> It was bad. I don't play anymore. I stopped in that last year, but uh, yeah, this was a this was a commission of uh, my friend and like his his mains or whatever. Yeah, I was just I was really happy with how it turned out. It was like line slash painting base, and it kind of gave it that like uh, almost like a mobile game look to it. And then this last piece was um, a personal piece. It wasn't prompted by school or anything. It was made with cut paper just because I felt like I needed more multimedia to give a bit of uh, variety in there. I believe it was made with just like regular kind of craft paper kind of thing and then colored with Copic markers and white ink, perhaps. But yeah, this was fun to put together. So with this portfolio, I was looking to get into art school to pursue a career in character design, so that was my major, and I wanted to work for like a video game company or a film, some sort of film industry company doing character design for them. This portfolio kind of makes me realize or reminds me of how my work has changed into including less of what I'm really a fan of, because all of this stuff was was based on things that I just like really loved and, and just felt like creating and turning into art. Whereas now, with all these years behind me of creating work and making pieces based on like prompts and stuff like that, it's it's really morphed into something much more strategic and less pure. And that's what I find with this portfolio is that it has like like fucking innocence to it. Back then I was just making art because it was it was fun to me and it still is but it just has all these um, other factors included in them now so yeah hope that was helpful to see if you have any questions about anything drop them okay so that was my portfolio getting into art school and then now we're gonna go over my portfolio one year into art school applying for my design program <laughs> So this first year, first year studies, it was intense. Like in my whole art school career or whatever of the four years, I think my second year was the hardest by fucking far. It was just like a fucking grind. Can't wait to go over that. <laughs> and then first year was the second hardest for me. I had just come in from 
never really looking at art as something that I should like study and um, try to technically improve and then like going into these classes that are very demanding and I have to learn new things that just don't come naturally to me. They don't come naturally to anybody but yeah it was it was definitely a a grind that changed my mindset and my view of how I should be trying to improve my art. Before this first year, I was doing art just for the fun of it and kind of improving at my own pace. But with all of this like structured learning and knowing how to study different things and what to pay attention to, I was improving at like a crazy fast rate, like like faster than I ever had before, which might do with the frequency of how much I was drawing, just like the fucking amount, but it also probably had to do with the things that I was learning from my instructors and my peers and just like the atmosphere around me pushing me to be better. Okay, so let's fucking get into this. This first one was a design drawing 115, I believe, if I remember correctly. It was the first uh, semester of first year. So this is all about the technicalities of perspective and creating spaces and atmospheric like 3D semen stuff on a, on a, on a 2D canvas. Yeah, I, I included this in my portfolio probably just because it was a requirement. I'm not like particularly proud of it or anything. It does look a little janky, like it is pretty correct technically, I guess, but yeah, maybe, maybe just because these were these had to be line based. Um, it's just not a very interesting piece to look at, but anyways, I, I couldn't do any of this shit <laughs> before this first year, so it was helpful in that way. Um, and then this piece was a pretty extensive project. There is a public garden downtown in my city, and we had to go there and uh, do a bunch of like studies of the plants and stuff, and then take pictures of what we want like the composition of and we could basically do anything as long as it was um, including plants and structures from that garden. Yeah, it was a lot of like prep and stuff and a lot of um, like figuring out what I wanted to do. This piece itself I did the night before. Like no fucking, no, no lie. <laughs> and like <laughs> I thought, I thought it wasn't that good. I thought they were gonna like smell on me that I like fucking stayed up all night and, and just finished it like 15 minutes before I fucking got to class. But no, everybody was like, wow. <laughs> wow, that's so good. <laughs> I was like, oh really? Shit. <laughs> but anyways, looking looking at it now, I, I do think it's a really good piece and uh, props to me, I guess, for, for pulling that off in a night. Next. <laughs> So this one was a another like technical perspective based one. I really don't think I did a good job on this one. If you look closely, like the craft's not very good. The fucking the roofing, dude. What? What is happening there? Uh, this was definitely a rushed project. I super did not want to do it. I had big ideas in the, in the beginning, but then when I went to execute it, I was like, mm, how do houses work? I don't understand. And I and I still don't. Houses are hard. This one was, eh, I don't know. This project was, you had to take reference images of like peers or whatever your friends uh, creating a scene and then you had to like render it to like a fucking T. And that's the kind of shit that I don't really like. Like I don't like rendering and rendering and rendering and making things look like life. Like what's the point? in art that just looks the exact same as a photo, you know? Obviously, I'm not saying that this looks like a photo. It looks like a fucking weird ass. I don't even know. I don't like this one. Can you tell? But anyways, uh, I'm pretty sure I did this in like two days, two or three days or something. Like I really wasn't into it and yeah, anyways. But I included it because of um, requirements. This one was a pretty cool project. You were given a photo, a black and white photo, and then you had to kind of abstract it even steps three times. So the first one's a photo, obviously, and then the second step is the photo transferred into shape, but still decently detailed. The two steps after that is the same scene getting more and more abstracted. This was made from cut paper. <laughs> 
if you've gone through courses using cut paper, you fucking know the struggle. Like I, I have no idea how I have all my fingers still like sleep deprived and doing this shit. But yeah, like it comes out looking nice. It is nice that we can do these things digitally now, but holy fuck. This one was a project from my color theory class. Bless that class, that, that class like literally took up my entire weekends for that entire semester. Like every single weekend because I had it on a Monday so that those two days of free time was the time that I needed to finish these projects. And they are fucking hefty. Mixing paint to, and then matching it to the exact color or the, the exact value that you need is so much work. This was a, just like a composition. I forget what exactly the requirements were, but I like how it turned out. I like the colors. Um, I think technically it wasn't exactly the best work because you had to make a color version and then a black and white version um, and then have them be the same values. And I'm pretty sure the black and white version is too light. Like it's not it's not on the same level as the color one, so. Um, so this one looks kind of weird, but this was a final project for like a technical drawing class. Um, you had to make a mask out of X amount of materials and make it based on a animal. So I picked the barn owl. So I used a bunch of materials from like a what would be in a barn house and I, I made it look like a barn owl and whatever like. I mean from from afar it doesn't look like much but holy fucking shit no lie I worked on this for like 20 something hours total just rendering and, and making it perfect because the the prof that I had for this class was a hard ass like she's she's super cool and i love her like I, I look up to her af but she did not take shit and she did not allow people to slack off which is like i was thankful for she was a good prof so this is another color theory project um you had to create two versions of yourself it was like a self-portrait project so the first one i remember when i was making the concept thumbs or whatever for for this project i was doing like a bunch of different like poses and just like you know whatever regular stuff and then as a joke i think i took a snapchat of myself putting my tongue in the air as if i was licking um my friend sally behind me she wasn't even in the class she was just in the room working on her homework and then i ended up really liking it and then i showed it to my prof and she was like yeah that's that's fucking dope do that one <laughs> and then i was like okay and then i turned it into like myself as like this demon and then all the shit you can see. This was, we were playing with shapes and creating active versus static compositions, which is important to understand for um, like design and stuff like that, just visual communications. Um, this was made with cut paper as well, eternal struggle. This one was kind of like meh or whatever. We had to use type and shapes to create a movie quote or whatever. So I picked the quote, do you feel lucky punk from Holy shit, what is that movie called? Clint Eastwood. Dirty Harry. Dirty Harry. So, and then we got to include a PDF of some sketchbook stuff. So this is a bunch of like sketchbook, whatever, sketches, just some character stuff. I really wanted to push that I wanted to get into the character design stream. So I included a lot of like character sketches and, and uh, figure drawing and la di da Okay, and then this little group of uh, drawings or whatever were figure drawing from, from live figure drawing classes. In one of the design drawing classes, sometimes we would get a model in and uh, they would pose for us and we would have to draw them with like charcoal and stuff like that. These were just a few that I thought were successful. Pretty classic traditional type of stuff. This one, another traditional based one, it's supposed to be a self-portrait. Do you see the resemblance? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look like me, but <laughs> this was just to explore the forms of the face and whatever. This one was a, another color theory project. It was, um, you had to make three compositions with equal steps from active to static. I think I was pretty successful here. I can't remember what, what kind of grade I got, but yeah, I thought it was just like a cool set of paintings. 
This one was a project for one of those technical drawing courses. We went to a museum and they have like a, a section dedicated to like Asian historical art and sculpture and stuff like that. So I did this profile shot of a wooden Buddha and just like rendering out all of the, the textures and stuff. I'm really proud of this one. I, I think I, I sold it in like a student sale or something. So I don't have it anymore, but yeah, it was a good one. So this one was the final project to my color theory course, the fucking dreaded ass color theory course. Oh my God, I spent so much fucking time on this. You had to make, oh, it was more than this. So you only had to show nine in your portfolio, nine of your best ones, but I think you had to make 12. Was it more? I can't even remember. I have to like ask my friends how many it was, but it was more than this. But you basically had to paint the same scene. Uh, the composition had to be like nice and blah, blah, blah in X amount of color palettes. So like monochrome, analog, I'm like blanking. Complementary, split complementary, blah, 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 blah. And yeah, it was a fucking bitch but turned out, turned out well for me, I think. This is another pain and struggle in one image, holy fuck. We had to do a lot of these paint charts just to drill into our brains how color theory worked and it, it definitely left a mark. This one was a basic kind of scene, just exploring perspective and how people get bigger and smaller based on where they are on the plane or whatever. Just with pencil, I literally did this in a night. And uh, this one was a another color theory project. We love color theory projects here. It was a still life of things that represented you. So I chose Asahi and Sapporo bottles just because I, I love the packaging on them. And I remember when I, when I turned 18 or something, I would buy beer and I like every fucking like 18 year old that's excited that they can drink and romanticize alcohol. Um, I kept these two beer bottles of Asahi and Sapporo. And yeah, I just included them in, in uh, this still life. And then I, I brought in one of my favorite heels just because it had like a metal piece at the back and I thought that would be interesting. I had a DS at the time and then a few books that I was reading under there as well. The project was to create um, a still life with two different color palettes, a discordant one and a harmonious one. The blue and red one is obviously discordant and then the yellow and orange one is analog, so more harmonious. Um, I don't think I did a really good job on this because the value shift between the, the two color, uh, color palettes is very jarring, I guess. Like the oranges are way too light to swap from blues and, and anyways, you get it. And then this last one was a personal piece. I think you were only allowed to put in so many personal pieces. Yeah, this was the only personal piece and I just wanted to show that I could do digital painting and uh, digital rendering and stuff. So this was for like an Instagram contest or something um, that I entered. You were supposed to like draw or paint one thing and then paint it again a month later and then see how you improve. This was the end of the month version of it and I don't know, I was I was proud of the how I how I did the face. It was like the first time that I ever actually painted out and rendered a face in in a more like realistic kind of way. And yeah, so I just wanted to include that. So yeah, that's that's all from my my pre pre art school and first year portfolios. Um, I'll do a few more videos going over my second year third year and fourth year or graduation portfolios as well. The graduation portfolio is the one that got me into my current position um, doing design and illustration. So yeah, hopefully that's interesting to you guys and I can provide any sort of advice or, or guidance or insight into the whole world of art school things and, and pursuing art as a, as a career. So yeah, my camera is gonna die soon, so I have to close this out pretty pretty promptly. But thank you very much for watching. Can't wait to do those other videos. Hopefully you guys can't wait as well, all fucking 30 of ya. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys in a bit.